Today on Retro Rob Plays Everything. Joysticks from space. Well, hello there, real gamers and all you gatekeepers out there. Retro Rob here, and today we're going to be taking a look at four, four kind of ergonomic joysticks and whether or not you should buy them. Actually, three of them, I'm gonna tell you whether or not you should buy them. Uh, and then the fourth, I'm gonna ask for help on because it's one that I have not used very much. Uh, anyway, a little bit of history here. The Atari 2600, of course, came with this guy <laughs> right here. And it is not a terrible joystick, to be honest. If you used it for really long periods of time, for some people it caused hand cramps. Uh, for me, I never really had a problem with it till I got older. Uh, but it, it was a design that was mostly functional. It just kind of got the job done. But uh, by the mid 80s, you know, we were starting to move into an era where people actually started caring about ergonomics. Now, I'm gonna step back a little bit because up until around 19, I think it was 1983, 1984, the only Atari I had access to was my Uncle Jeff's Atari, which fortunately I was there all the time. So, easy to play all the time. And I use this joystick a lot, but uh, for Christmas, I think it was Christmas 1983. I might be a little bit off, but uh, I ended up getting this, the Sears Arcade 2, uh, which is, a, it's, in Japan they call it the Atari 2800, but it is a modernized version of the 2600. Ran the same games and basically operated the same, except it did have four joystick ports. And the reason for that is, this joystick was genius. Look at this. It has a paddle built into it. That is awesome, right? Wrong. This controller gave me hand cramps like nothing I'd had before. The pressure it would put on your wrist and on your thumb and forefinger when you're playing, because this is how you fired a button, you could hold it like this and do this, but generally speaking, people would hold it like this. Because of all this pressure, your hand would just be cramped, really cramped, after long play sessions, or even, to be honest, medium play sessions. So, uh, immediately, I was, you know, a little bit frustrated with this controller and looked for other alternatives. And in 19... 84-ish, uh, this guy had come out on the ColecoVision. And this looked amazing to me. And I'm trying to remember whether I saw this at Toys R Us or whether my friend uh, Chris had this. But this joystick felt awesome to me. I mean, it just alleviated a lot of the stress that was on my hands. So I immediately started looking, um, looking for one for the Atari 2600 which led me down the path of buying a lot of ergo sticks over the years. But apparently my timeline is messed up because the only ergo stick uh, that was available or ergonomic based stick that was available on the Atari 2600 wasn't available till long after, at least a couple years after I had been, uh, been off the Atari with the exception of Atari's joystick, which I never had till I was 40. So anyway, uh, let's get started and take a look at a few of these. I think you're gonna enjoy this little trip down memory lane. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the Atari 2600 Space Age joystick, Sirsa 1983. This is the controller that really sets my timeline askew because 1983 seems way too early to me for this one. Uh, it would have made it basically coming out at about the same time as ColecoVision's offering. And uh, yeah, it just doesn't fit for me. But anyway, uh, it's got a nice box on it. It's a pretty interesting looking joystick. 
Let's take a look inside here. And uh, some notes. It feels okay, but it's a little bit creaky. Here, let's turn it around. You can take a look at it. And you kind of grab it like this. And firings like this. It actually feels pretty decent in the hand. By the way, I'd probably control it like this, I think, when I was a kid. Although, nowadays, I'd be more likely to do it like this. But anyway, um, it feels okay. Uh, like I said, a little bit creaky. I really like this because this is rubberized. The top is not... The plastics are, again, okay, but not super durable like some of the other offerings I'm going to show you. Uh, one thing to really note about this is it's very prone to breakage. I mean, these things really break. In fact, I had three of these, and this is the only one that works, and it only works because I took two other donors and ripped them apart. Uh, to keep them going. One of the problems is that the traces on these are, the way it's designed is just odd. Uh, it has some very thin traces in it, and the uh, contacts tend to actually rub off, believe it or not. Just weird. Uh, it doesn't have the domes of the earlier Atari joysticks. It just basically has these little little uh, rubber rubber contacts that make contact with uh, a, little, a little trace, a little like very thin plastic trace and it yeah it just doesn't hold together but anyway this one does work but uh good luck finding one that does work for that reason i don't recommend them they are super expensive to get and they won't last very long so even though this sucker's really cool looking look at that yeah i'd recommend against it meet the wickel ergo stick it's the most beautiful thing ever this was made in 1988. It was announced uh, at CES, I believe, and probably had one of the most creepy mascots I've ever seen. I'll, I'll post that right here. Okay, creepy mascot, enough of you. Anyway, 1988, uh, I don't remember it that way. I remember it as having been one that I used with my Atari 2600, but given the time frame, is way more likely I used it on the Commodore 64. Uh, typical Wicko quality. It is an amazing stick. Works really well. Listen to this. Oh, sounds beautiful. It has, if you look at the bottom, space for your fingers. And then your, uh, your trigger finger fits right up here. Sorry, I can't show you that well. but And then you control it like this. I mean, it's just, just an amazing stick. So, some things to note. If you can buy one of these, make sure that you can look at it first, unless you get it really cheap. And the reason for that is this skin likes to degrade. It has a rubberized coat all the way from the, this is rubberized, and all the way down to the bottom here, it's rubberized. This rubber likes to degrade. So it will feel really gummy if it's a bad one, and it'll feel nice if it's a good one. You've got to feel this thing. Uh, you. You know, you can try getting it off of eBay, but just note that if you're going to clean this guy, do not, and I repeat, do not use something like Goo Gone on it because there's a good chance it'll cause some pooling and it'll make it look really nasty. Use a very gentle soap and then uh, clean it with straight up some water. So uh, just maintain it that way. Don't use anything very abrasive. It will make it look goofy. Just, just trust me on it, okay? Anyway really really gate uh just amazing controller i can't say enough good about it but be very careful so this is a cautious go ahead and buy recommendation can a controller be sexy you ask oh yes it can especially if it's 1986's epix 500xj also known as the konix speed king in europe that's right, I'm putting all Europe in a box like Americans do. Sorry about that. But really, that's all we can do. Anyway, this thing is amazing. Number one, feels great. Look at this. Oh. Trigger. Hear that clicking? 
Yeah, that's some loud clicking. And when two of you are playing with this thing, it sounds like a stampede of buffalo. But this is made out of what my friends and I used to call football helmet plastic. It is nearly indestructible. But a note, if you do destroy it, it is a mess to get open. There's two screws here and this sticker needs to come off to service it. So I see a bunch where people just like would, they just like cut a line in the center of it. Uh, if you can heat it and remove it, but, but folks, guess what? On eBay, you can get a replacement cover for it. It'll be labeled as the Koenigs one, but at least somebody makes uh, a way to service these now or you know a sticker to help if you've serviced it. So anyway, keep that in mind. Don't get a broken one. If you get one that's working, it's probably gonna work forever anyway. I've never had one of these break on me. But this right here, this one is both affordable and reliable. So it gets a definite thumbs up. This is a, if you can find it, definitely buy it. It's a great controller, highly recommended. All right, so this last one I don't know a lot about and I'm gonna ask you guys for some help on this one. This is 1988's Power Player's Joystick by Mindscape. It is an interesting controller. There are a lot of variants of this floating around Europe, but as far as I know, this was the only one of its kind of this ilk released in the US. And uh, it's nice. You can switch hands with it. It's got a pistol grip. The plastics actually don't feel too bad. They feel a lot better than Atari's offering. Uh, they feel solid. I mean, it's not, you know, quite a Wicko level or the 500XJ level, but it does feel solid. And I, I don't, I don't think this thing would break very easily. I've seen these packaged as low as 30 bucks. I mean, in box as low as 30 bucks. So they look like a really interesting controller and I think they probably play okay. I don't know. But anyway, this is one I wanna know about. Have any of you guys out there got any experience with this guy? Is it reliable? Is it a good controller at all? Let me know in the comments down below. I wanna know about this one. And that is pretty much gonna be the end of the video. So that wraps it up for my video on 80s ergonomic joysticks. It was an amazing time in history where some really unusual things were going on as far as new types of controllers and how we were controlling games. And they were willing to experiment. And some of the experiments were actually very successful. And I believe the XJ here and the Wicko at least definitely proved that. They were great controllers and they were definitely, definitely more comfortable to use than the default controllers that came with your systems. Anyway, that wraps it up. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or have some comments, let me know down below. Thumbs up, subscribe for more, ring this stupid bell, and I'll see you in a couple days. Bye!